myself. Before Avengers Infinity War, I hated Thanos. And not in the comics. Thanos is awesome in the comics. But in the movies, it just seemed like he sat on his fat ass and let other people do his work for him. Like he was the George Lucas of supervillains. We have shots fired! Shots fired. I mean, other supervillains like Loki and Ronan are out there hustling, and this guy sounds like Eric Cartman. I'll do it myself. Fine, I'll do it myself! You guys just watch! It seemed like Thanos was set to be another generic bad guy like Malekith or Ronan, somebody whose only character trait was wanting something really, really bad. But the creative team of Infinity War made up for it by crafting a character with a full range of emotion and clear motivations. And I'm not going to say he was a hero. Because what's a hero? I mean, if he were really a hero, then instead of killing half the universe, he just would have used his godhood to double the universe's resources, but he's such a jerkwad he never thought of that. Anyways, now we can look back on the history of the MCU and ask ourselves, what was Thanos' original plan? Why did he keep asking lackeys like Ronan and Loki to do his dirty work? And most of all, why did he give Loki an Infinity Stone when all he wants is Infinity Stones? Well, I think I've got some answers for you. The big theory on the internet is that he waited for Odin, the Ancient One, and Ego to die. But I don't think that's the case. I mean, sure, it created a power vacuum. It's lucky for him that they died, but that wasn't part of his plan. Let's look at the stones one at a time. First, the Space Stone. Remember, Thanos has been searching for the stones for centuries, but some of them have been hidden for several millennia. Odin likely hid the Space Stone on Earth when Asgard first interfered with the Frost Giants invasion in the year 965. If you think about it, Earth is a pretty great hiding spot for a celestial object. The planet is technologically primitive, so no advanced race would think to look here. Also, the people of Earth don't have the technology to detect an Infinity Stone, well, at least not for another thousand years. But mostly, Earth is one of the Nine Realms, and it's under Asgard's protection. This means that Heimdall can keep a close eye on every soul in our sweet little blue dot. Odin hid the Tesseract behind a carving of the World Tree. And I'm gonna guess that the chamber where it was stored also contained a cloaking device, or a cloaking enchantment, whatever, to keep advanced races from detecting its energy signature. But then the Red Skull shows up and starts making weapons with the Tesseract's energy. It would have been a great time for Thanos to show up and claim the stone, but he has no idea it's on Earth. He's not omniscient, yet. But fast forward about 70 years to when Loki is exiled from Asgard and secretly living on Earth. He finds out about the Tesseract by mind controlling Eric Selvig. And a lot of people, including we here at Screen Crush, have asked, well, how did Loki know to mind control Eric Selvig when they never even had a scene together? I'd say that Loki was doing background research on everyone that Thor knew on Earth. So when the time came, he could take them hostage or some other shitty villain thing. Anyways, Loki recognizes the Tesseract because it used to belong to his dad. And he's like, oh snap, an Infinity Stone. I know a guy who wants those. He'll give me an army so I can conquer my stupid brother's stupid planet. So he aligns himself with Thanos surveys potential threats like S.H.I.E.L.D., Captain America, Hulk, and Iron Man, and he's got Eric Selvig unknowingly slipping him info. And he's also got a plan to take all of these heroes down and embarrass his brother. That was the plan. Not a great plan. Now the next part always throws people off. Why would Thanos, who only wants Infinity Stones, give away an Infinity Stone? Well, I've got a theory about that. First of all, why would Thanos send Loki in the first place? Because Loki's a prince of Asgard, and Thanos doesn't want any trouble with Odin. His goal is to send an overwhelming strike force against an under-equipped opponent and then install a friendly government. Kneel before me. Kneel! Loki, as Asgardian royalty, would be in a unique position to broker a truce with the Asgardian throne. Otherwise, Odin might try to take back the Tesseract by force. And the window of time for Odin's inaction was very, very small. Asgardian armies couldn't help Earth because the Bifrost had been destroyed. And yes, Odin sent Thor to Earth using dark magic, which is also how Heimdall sent the Hulk to Earth. But from what we've seen, you can't send an entire army that way, just one person at a time. Thanos gave Loki the Mind Stone for three reasons. One, there was no room for failure and Loki needed all the help he could get. Two, Thanos couldn't go himself without risking Asgard and the other seven realms getting in the way of his quest. And three, Loki didn't know the scepter contained the Mind Stone so Loki would never use its full potential. And when the scepter was left on Earth, Thanos was probably hoping the humans would use it to destroy themselves, which almost happened. Leaving technology this advanced on a primitive planet is like leaving a revolver with some cavemen. Oh, I don't like Not cool. I now let's look at the reality stone or the ether. And this would have been the hardest of the items to find. The ether's been hidden for 3,000 years when the Dark Elves use the Convergence to try to kill reality. Thanos knows another multi-realm eclipse is coming, so maybe he's hoping the ether will resurface. Other than that, he's got nothing. Thor didn't tell anyone where he buried the ether, and as far as Thanos knows, the Dark Elves are all dead. So yeah, 
Thanos got lucky that the ether was found and ended up in the care of a slave-owning hoarder. But I would like to address the theory that Thanos attacked because Odin just died. I think that when Loki took Odin's place at the end of Thor The Dark World, Thanos figured out the ploy pretty fast. Remember, he knows that Loki fakes his own death because when he kills Loki in Infinity War, he says no resurrections this time. When Asgard's nine realms start to fall apart and Odin builds monuments to Loki, Nine realms completely in chaos. Enemies of Asgard assembling, plotting our demise, all while you, Odin, the protector of those nine realms, is sitting here in your bathrobe eating grapes. Thanos would have smelled deception. That's why he chose to invade Asgard by the end of Ragnarok. He brings his warship Sanctuary 2 because he's expecting a better defense. So now let's talk about the Power Stone, which was on planet Morag. Now remember, Thanos tasked Ronan to find the orb containing the Power Stone for him, and in return, he would destroy Xandar. I don't think anyone knew for sure that the stone would be on Morag, but it was probably part of a larger search. In the Guardians of the Galaxy audio commentary, James Gunn says that Morag is usually covered in water, but every 500 years or so, the tides recede and you can walk on the surface. Since there's a temple dedicated to the stones on the planet, evidenced by these carvings on the walls, it's a good place to start looking. For instance, the Collector hired this pawn shop owner to hire the Ravagers to search Morag. And we know the Collector knew about the temple because you can see these same carvings in his holograms. I think it's likely that Ronan had lots of search parties looking for the orb and that these guys just got lucky. Otherwise, Thanos would have gone after the orb himself. And this is another situation when it seems like Thanos sent a proxy when he should have gone himself. But he did send his daughters, the top assassins in the universe, to oversee Ronan. And he was probably off looking for the Soul Stone. I don't know, I don't know what Thanos does with his time. I also think that maybe Thanos wanted to use Ronan as an ally against the Avengers, since these heroes had just beaten back a whole Chitari host. As we all know, Ronan is a colossal fuck up who does nothing but make the situation worse. All he had to do is grab a metal ball off a dead planet. Instead, the orb ends up protected by one of the most powerful militaries in the galaxy. Well, maybe not that powerful. This is probably the moment when Thanos says, Fine, I'll do it myself. Up until now, he's been worried about upsetting the balance of power or showing a large commitment of resources. If Thanos had brought all of his strength to bear to capture one stone, then the governments of the galaxy, like the Kree Empire and Xandar, would have banded together to stop him. He preferred to play the game in the shadows, but now he sees that he can only win through speed and brute force. Plus, at this point, most of the stones have been revealed and he can get to them before anyone can rally to stop him. And just a brief mention here, I don't think that Ego's defeat factored into Thanos' decision in any way. Ego is the last celestial, and he doesn't advertise this fact. He actually keeps his true nature a secret to further his own agenda. If Ego found out about Thanos' plans, he would have tried to stop him. But overall, he was a non-factor. Another theory is that after the Ancient One died, Thanos seized the opportunity to take the Time Stone. Yeah, I don't know about this one either. How would Thanos have known the Time Stone was on Earth? In fact, until the events of Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme could have been hiding it in other dimensions, surrounded by spells. Before the Avengers, if Thanos would have known there were two stones on Earth, he would have attacked en masse, Odin's feelings be damned, and had three stones right away. I think it's more likely that he was alerted to the presence of the Time Stone when Doctor Strange used it so flagrantly. Remember the warning that Wong and Mordo gave him. Temporal manipulations can create branches in time, unstable dimensional openings, spatial paradoxes, time loops. Using the Time Stone would have created a ripple in the space-time continuum that probably stretched out across the universe. If not for Strange, the stone would have never been found. I mean, I'm not blaming him. He had to use it to keep the universe from becoming part of a blacklight poster. Anyways, that's my theory on why Thanos waited. What do you think? Am I reaching? Maybe I'm reaching. Leave a comment and let me know. Also, please don't forget to like, subscribe, whatever you want. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.